This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! It was a long, dull trip back home, but I didn't lose focus. I firmly squeezed the grip of the bat, which was already soggy from sweat. Realizing that, I wiped it down with my sleeve. If something were to happen, I wouldn't want it to be slippery. Since this morning, I'd become especially sensitive to the presence of cars. I wonder why! Even while walking, my ears picked up and sought out threatening sounds and presences that could be closing in. And that was why I could hear it. Without a doubt, there were footsteps. Those footsteps had matched up perfectly with mine for a while now. From what I could sense, it was just one person. But I had no intention of being careless. Did they intend to follow me like that car this morning until we were in a good location to assault me? Then it wasn't a good idea to keep walking like this. I stopped walking and looked back. The wooded path, crowded with trees, responded with silence as if there was nobody there to begin with. But I wouldn't be fooled. I was certain footsteps were following me. And just as I stopped, the footsteps stopped as well. Meaning the person following me wanted to keep their distance. That was, without question, proof that I was their target. I always feel like somebody's watching me. I actually, in a different Discord server, I posted that the lyrics to that song with the picture of Rena smiling at us with her creepy wizard eyes. The, tea, the trees rustled with the sound of the wind. The Higarashi also joined in the dissonant chorus, trying to throw my focus into disarray. Had five minutes passed? Or had I been like this for a whole thirty minutes? It was so hard to breathe that I might have suffocated. It seemed like I would be the first one to panic. Without a doubt, he was lurking in the shade of that tree with bated breath. Then, I'd make the first move. I fixed my grip on the bat. I raised it up to my shoulders to be ready to swing it at any time. This is not going to end well. With all my might, I screamed at whoever was hiding in the shade of the trees. But the presence in the shade didn't budge. Until the moment I found them, they had no intention of revealing themselves. I screamed out angrily at them again, but even still, they didn't move at all. Then I'll go over there myself. With all due vigilance, I approached step by step. Stepping into the tree's shadow, I saw a human figure there. That figure was curled up like a small animal. Hi, Rena. What are you doing, girl? When she realized I had found her, her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. I wouldn't accept that silence and scream the question at her. You got, you, bro, you're becoming a big jerky McJerkwad. I still don't know what's up with their lizard eyes, but Keiichi definitely going crazy. Rena was in a panic with tears welling up in her eyes. But it was obvious that she had been following me. Maybe there is a demon that's possessing them at times, but at least right now, for the most part, they're just sweet and probably worried about us. I knew it! I knew people were gonna I knew they were gonna be worried about us. And there's good reason to be worried about us. Thinking about how I'd been acting up until now, it wasn't hard to imagine that my behavior could have been perceived as strange. You think? So Rena was concerned. At a quick glance, that's how it would seem. But I wasn't going to let my guard down that easily. Even if that really was the case, she still wouldn't have to do something like try to tail me. She should have called out to me when she, I was leaving and gone out right with me. But Rena didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking speed. On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and deviously tried to hide her presence from me. Then after she realized I noticed she was there, she held her breath as she tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force one to take pity on her, but without a doubt, she was tailing me. Still glaring at Rena, I continued walking onwards. After I'd walk a bit, she'd ignore my command and begin walking again, so I yelled at her once more. <laughs> Don't gun it, Rena, move somewhere else! Wow. 
this... Wow. She's not gonna like that. I moved out of the way and waved my bat violently to urge her forward. Making a pitiful expression, she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. That agitated me to no end. I knew it was a lie. If you wanted to go home together, then you should have called out to me. Now you're just boarding out random lies. I mean, he actually does have a point there. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Keiichi might need to get some happy pills. It seemed that the seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying anything, Rena had understood I was what I was feeling inside. I swung the bat, urging her again to walk. Rena looked back and forth between me and the bat and started walking hesitantly, then stopped again. We're gonna make her cry. <gasps> dude, oh, dude, that's a good point. What if Keiichi has the lizard eyes to run? A oh, that would be such a good twist. I don't know what would be the cause of the lizard eyes, but oh, that's probably the case. And that w that's amazing if that's the case. Rena guarded herself while pointing at me holding the bat. She may have realized that I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat, but still guardedly opened the way for her. <sighs> no, I think there are some big problems here, actually. There was nothing else she could protest. She passed by me tibidly so as not to set me off. Aww. I feel bad for Rena. I know she's done some creepy stuff, but honestly, I think a lot of the creepy stuff is just us thinking she's doing creepy stuff. And I think she's just a a sad and probably broken person. As I watched her pass by, she stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Oi, then a powerful gust blew past us, barraging my face with dust. The dust got him into my eyes and clouded my vision. While I'm rubbing at my eyes with my left hand, I swing blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening that I had presented. Ah! Are you going to accidentally not smash her face in? I hope not. But Rena didn't even try to attack during that opening. Attack me? No, she hadn't budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering skirt in the wind. As her skirt settled, so did the silence. At that moment, the voice inside of me immediately warned me of the impending danger. I was caught by surprise. The smell of the air had changed. You can smell the air now? What the heck? After, without me realizing it, the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. It was like the air had suddenly become invisible concrete, like Rena and I were locked in this space. Rena didn't move an inch. Also unable to move, I stared at her back. Rena was the first to break the silence. Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Rena into that other person who looks like Rena. Uh-oh, demon possession time? But the voice was one I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. Carelessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. <laughs> Too shy to even turn around, Rena squeezed her voice out desperately. As she trembled. The question Rena asked was by no means unexpected. <laughs> That's American Keiji. I do what I want. I'm trying out for the baseball team. That's true. And honestly, a lot of respect to Mion for carrying that gun. I just think that that's going to be dangerous for us later on. <laughs> oh, there's a certain kind of person that plays baseball, Rena? Is that what you're saying? 
You're not wrong, Rena. I mean, like, it is weird for him to suddenly just start doing this. I couldn't tell what kind of answer she was looking for, and I was getting tired of answering her. I just, I have to play baseball right now. She answered instantly, and that annoyed me slightly. <laughs> this is the dumbest excuse. I just felt like baseball. Jeez, <laughs> their friendship has just been deteriorated. What did you mean by you two? Oh, oh, I bet, I bet the baseball bat came from Satoshi's old locker and they never emptied it for some reason. I tried to sound a bit more threatening to end the conversation. Until my suspicions about Rena were cleared, I had no obligation to answer her questions. Rena still didn't turn around and spat out the words of apology one after the next. Cold. I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch like she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. But even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was about to threaten her again, Rena asked her final question. What did she mean by the bat was the same? I had no idea what she was talking about. Even still, Rena didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed. Yeah, it was Satoshi's bat. Satoshi? What? Upon hearing that name out of the blue, I became dumbfounded for a brief moment. By Satoshi? Did she mean the student who had transferred out last year? No, that couldn't be. Rena had tried to cover it up by saying he transferred, but Uisi-san told me quite clearly that he was missing. He was the student who sat on my seat until last year. He was believed to have been demoned away by Oyoshiro-sama's curse. I didn't know the details about his, his disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watanagashi by a drug addict. And not long after that, he suddenly vanished and was now missing. Oh, how did I forget that he was... I'm like, I can't remember who vanished when the housewife was being to death. It's like, no, it was definitely Satoshi. He was kind of important. That Satoshi and I were... What? My gaze fell into the bat in my hands. Could it be? Satoshi Hojo. It was a bit difficult to see, but that was what was written on the white tape at the end of the bat. I see. So this was Satoshi's bat. Oh. Dude, this music is so good. The way Rana said that, it seems like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of an offering at a shrine, or a memento of the deceased. I could only stand there perplexed and unable to be to respond. Rena continued speaking without waiting for a reply. Uh, what? Rena was talking about more than just the bat belonging to Satoshi. He also went super paranoid and crazy? <laughs> Is that just something that people do? Like, a new a dude joins the town and it's like, I must play baseball. <laughs> what about it? I closed my mouth before I could say that out loud. Listen carefully, Keiichi. Rena is trying to tell us something important. Jeez, 
I don't think... I think Ren is having a rough time right now. Then one day he suddenly... What? Ren had swallowed her words. Rena's sudden silence brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then that I could finally digest the content of the entire con uh, conversation. She was saying that my chain of actions was exactly the same as Satoshi's. What was the meaning of this? Up until now, I'd forgotten all about Satoshi. I had never paid so much as a thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he'd done. My actions today should have been my own creation, after all the planning I had done. But they had been the exact same as Satoshi's? Then Satoshi... No, more importantly, if both Satoshi and I acted the same, then there really was a good possibility that what happened after would be the same. Rena, Rena knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Rena, what was going to happen to me? With that, I grabbed Rena's shoulder violently and forcibly turned her around to face me. As I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. Creepy Ren is back! It was that person I didn't know. At least it definitely wasn't the Ren Ryugu who I'd been talking up to at this point. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was unsurpassed. That gaze that pierced like a cold needle. The smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by a knife. Chills went down my spine. My mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both of Rena's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from that time before, Rena brought her face close to mine, so close that I could feel her breath. Her face had filled my entire field of vision. Then, her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper. Like the curve of a crescent moon, she grinned. After a short pause, Rena repeated the same words again. Transferred meaning what? What Rena must have meant was the some new definition of transfer that I was previously not aware of. My throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. All I could do was swallow down my own saliva. It would seem that Rena saw that as a nod. Uh huh. She pulled her gaze back and spryly stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs gave out and I fell onto my knees pathetically. Rena and me on my knees underneath her with a motionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in that pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape with her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand, but right now it was useless to me. I was like a fly caught in her web. Heavy sweat beaded all over my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. Rena finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. But her question was missing something important, and it was incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. What did she not want me to do? <laughs> Yikes. All right, Rana. Achievement unlocked. Pitch hitter. Cool. <laughs> Satoshi and I had what? All my well-planned actions throughout the day turned out to have been nothing more than a reenactment of what Satoshi had done. Satoshi. Had he really been in the same situation as I was now? The friends he had gotten along with had changed suddenly, and for no reason, at least none that I had noticed, planned to kill him? Then fearing for his life as I am, he got a bat to protect himself and carried it around every day to practice his swing? Then one day, suddenly... He transferred... My blood went cold, causing a prickling sensation to course through my veins. 
Starting near my heart, it radiated outwards from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, chilling every part of me without recourse. What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Was Satoshi still at wherever he transferred to? Was he the only one who would be able to understand me? Would he be able to tell me why it all ended up like this? More importantly, where did he transfer to? What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Before I knew it, I was at my front door. The frigid knob was hard to turn. Was nobody home? It wasn't that odd of an occurrence. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the single key attached to my fur seal keychain. You think he's underground? In that sense? Yeah, possibly. I stepped into the entryway. Just as I was about to take off my shoes, a chill ran down my spine. Someone had entered right behind me. Like a classmate messing around, standing right up behind my back. You're kidding, right? It had to be my imagination. Logically speaking, it was impossible for someone to be able to hide their presence within my personal space all the way through the door. But there was undoubtedly someone behind me. Hey now, hey now, Keiichi. How do you know they're there, even though they're behind you? Because... I could hear the sound of flowing hair. There's no other reason I'd hear that sound. That was the presence. Because I could hear the sound of them blinking. Kichi, my bar, there's no way you could hear that. My most base instincts were war war warning me of the presence. Common sense was telling me that it was just my imagination. It was just my imagination. There was nobody behind me. I began to erase the mental image of an eerie figure standing behind me. But at the same time, I asked myself, if there was nobody and what was I feeling as an uncomfortable sensation sw crawled up my spine. Actually, wouldn't it be better if there was somebody there? If there was nobody there when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? I'd ha be able to answer all of those questions just by looking behind me. But I didn't have enough courage to do even that simple task. All right, I could try speaking to them. The person behind me might answer me. It was a random thought. I didn't care how I went about it, so long as I didn't have to turn around. If I had calmed down and thought about it, I would have known that the, that wouldn't have solved anything. I spoke in such a hoarse, broken voice that I couldn't believe it was my own. I could almost feel the contemplating their response. I felt it. There's no way. How? how I, there's no way I should be able to do that. Calm down, KG. It's all in your head. That time I was certain I heard it. As if I hesitantly tried to answer my inquiry, I was certain I could hear the sound of somebody inhaling. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it clearly. It was a girl. A young girl. I didn't know who, but... A tiny speck of courage in me, however reckless it was, inspired a primal yet fitting solution to this current predicament. A scream. All the force of my body released from my lungs and through my throat, ceasing all thought processes in my head. Suppressing all my thoughts and emotions, I began to collapse like a house of cards, somehow managing to twist my body and look back as I did so. What the heck? This guy is completely insane at this point. Like, totally. Wow. This reminds you of a Japanese game that's like London Bridge? Interesting. It was definitely there. Right there. Somebody was there. Until the moment I turned around. Until I brought the area behind me into my field of vision. They were definitely there. Kagome, Kagome. Interesting. Falling face up, my eyes traced the remnants of the presence suspended in the empty space. It couldn't be. They were invisible. It looked like they weren't there. But were they actually still standing there? As I screamed, all the emotions I was holding back burst free in a violent wave. However, I was decidedly calm as my emotional dam collapsed. The turbulent wave of pent-up emotions was skillfully diverted into a torrent of aggression. That emotion was definitely required to extricate myself to the, from the bizarre situation happening right in front of me. In my state of heightened lucidity, I entrusted my body to the fury. The metal bat felt held firm in my right hand, as if drawn there by a magnet. A mid-level sweep would be the hardest attack to dodge, 
I remembered reading something like that from a book about swordsmanship or something. I brandished my will to fight. The afterimage of the amalgamation of metal flashed as it swung from left to right, beating against the entryway. The bat slammed into the right wall, the tip rebounding violently. Very calmly, I transferred the force of the rebound into a sweep to the left. The door of the shoe cupboard was split into pieces. Bro, you're... First he threw his bean buns against the wall, and now he's just literally destroying the house with a baseball bat. If his parents don't take him in for some kind of a psychiatric evaluation after this, then they have failed his parents. Those two swings whiffed through empty space, but they seemed to have a great psychological impact on the enemy. <laughs> I could feel a panic emanating from that space. The attack wasn't the only thing required. I extracted the bat from the cupboard it was embedded in as I screamed as I spun my entire body around in a large arc. This guy has gone completely insane at this point. 100%. My scream shook the air, imbuing my ferocious swing with even more destructive power. Without mercy or restraint, my violent strike with certainly fatal force behind it shattered the top of the cupboard. None of my attacks struck the enemy, but my ferocity had certainly seemed to impact them. Dude, there's nobody there! <laughs> Breathing heavily, my entire body soaked in sweat. The invisible enemy, there but not there, dispersed. When I was certain the enemy had retreated, I locked the front door and latched the chain. No way. No way. Had it only feigned retreat and was now inside my house? Once again, I channeled my aggression and searched the house for the presence. But it was gone. I had succeeded in fending it off. At that moment, the tension drained from my body, and I let out a deep sigh of relief. All the emotions I'd been holding back chaotically merged together and began to flood out. A hodgepodge of fear, accomplishment, and disbelief all mixed together and began to flow through my body. Unable to deal with each individual feeling, I beat them all back with the strongest exhaustion. Even in this moment, I remained composed. After checking that all the doors throughout the house were locked, I went up to my room on the second floor and closed the curtains. Oh, this sounds like Earthbound music, and I love it. I straightened my back and tilted my head back a little. After clearing my mind of all idle thoughts, I managed to calm it down even more. What was that at the front door? I think that was you losing the plot. There was definitely something there. Thinking about it, maybe it was just an apparition I dreamt up in my confused state, but I really didn't think that was the case. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. Compose yourself. But no matter how calmly I thought about it, what just happened wasn't a figment of my imagination. No, it was, and you gone cray-cray. <laughs> it was obviously a supernatural phenomenon, and without a doubt, something was behind me. It wasn't some sort of illusion I saw amidst my confusion and disorientation. Proof? I had just one piece. What I asked, who is it? They inhaled, as if they were about to answer. That sound had clearly reached my ears. The situation I was in right now was still unclear. Either I'd been possessed by the supernatural phenomenon known as Oyashiro-sama's curse, or this was a ruse by the villagers who believed in it and were imitating it. This music is like a dark version of the area where Ness is dreaming. Magicant? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, either way, their motives were unclear. The roundabout way in which it had been done was also still a mystery. If it was perpetuated by humans... And that would mean admitting that it was Rena and the rest of them doing it, but that would be uh, solvable. Uisi-san and the rest of the police would surely arrest my enemy. But, if it was a manifestation of oyashiro samas curse, I wondered what would happen. Uisi-san said very, <laughs> very clearly declared that curses didn't exist. At that time, those words were pretty dependable, but as fiends were now, with the rising possibility that the perpetrators were not human, he suddenly seemed quite unreliable. If I told Uisi-san that this was the work of Oyashiro-sama's curse, what would happen? I couldn't imagine his reaction, but it would go without question that <laughs> a void would expand rapidly between myself and Uisi-san. With me having so few allies to begin with, and not being able to confidently declare whether this was, was or was not a curse, there was no merit to doing that. I'd better keep with the facts of what just happened at the doorway to myself. It would be better if I didn't add what happened here to the memo behind the clock. There was still the ever-so-slight possibility that I had accidentally confused when I thought I was composed, and I was just going berserk in the entryway. That is what happened, dude! Like, 
you've got maybe one percent of your stability and mental stability left, but ninety-nine percent crazy. Uh, please excuse me. I need to get a refill on my water. <laughs> 